homesteaders that I know pay for their homesteading by having a job somewhere. The farm's gonna make money someday and we're not gonna do anything but the farm. Until that point, we're going to do whatever it takes to bring this dream to life. So I started going out, meeting random people, and promoting myself as a videographer or storyteller. The very first night I went out, I met Scott Heim, the owner of 101 Mobility Velasca. He just opened up, and here's a little sneak peek into what we created. So for those of you who are curious, we have another brother. He was on a mission for our church for a couple of years, and at this point in time, he just came back. Oh my gosh! Hi, Perry. Hey, you doing all right? Doing good. Come on in, my friend. Cold out there. You know, it's warm enough though. Yeah. Getting to be springtime. Here we go, man, went to Fairbanks for some logs. He did, yeah. We're going to get some freaking huge logs, and uh, one day when we get a mill, we'll uh, mill it hey, into some lumber. You ain't so. going to get your mill for a while. Yeah, it's going to be a minute. Come up, try it's... ours out. Are you, are you offering it? To... Yeah, come up, try it out. We're going to learn how to mill on your logs, that way it won't mess mine up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's a good point. Um, I, I'll t I'll, I'll, I think we'd be down to, to do a little test run. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll try it out. <laughs> All right, thanks, Barry. <laughs> See you later. We're going to build a greenhouse, and we're pretty excited about it. We're using electrical conduit to make a hoop house and providing a, a real solid wood infrastructure underneath it. It's 2021, and the lumber prices are out of this world right now. And to build this greenhouse the way I want to, would cost me a fortune. We ordered a mill, but it's not gonna be here for a month. So here we are, we've planted a bunch of plants and we're really excited about the plants and they're growing beautifully. And in, in most cases, that would be a wonderful thing, which it is, except that we're running out of space in our house to house said plants. And the ideal thing would be to put them in a greenhouse, which we're working on. But, hashtag, we don't have lumber yet. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. So I was just about ready to purchase lumber and then Perry came over. I feel really blessed right now. Well, whenever we decided to come out here, Perry was wanting to build a log cabin and so he ordered the sawmill before we come out here. Fortunately, because lumber prices went through the roof and and the delivery dates on them got way out there. This whole process is really cool to me. Like the fact that I have a big giant log and I can turn it into usable lumber is epic. Been out here. One thing been great is always finding really good neighbors. The borough is not just going to run out and help you if you're stuck or uh, something's broke and you need to borrow something. They're not going to be right here, but we've got a lot of good neighbors and you know if you need something, one of the neighbors around here somewhere will be home and, and they'll all do anything for you. I'm, I'm really upset about what I did to your driveway just now. I knew it was going to get bad, but it well, moved anyway with it, trucks. Let, let it dry a little bit and take the box blade and well, I was, I was going to say, I've got a box blade, and I mean, we could move some into this ditch or something, yeah, or... Say after it dries, I think a little tractor will probably smooth it up enough. Yeah. yeah. But just let me know if you need some yeah, help, because I... I don't think you can do much with it until it dries a little bit. And it dries quite a bit in the afternoons. So. Yeah. yeah. I've got a bucket if we need to move stuff. I mean, I'm just telling you, I'm here to help. It's seven degrees. Because, I mean, I just made a big mess there. Aside from their driveway, the road out to the highway, has sections that are getting pretty muddy. It's still passable, but if it gets much worse, then we could be in a bit of a bind. Um, I'm hoping this is kind of the extent of the mud 
troubles. <laughs> Part of my early morning look, it's five o'clock in the morning and I gotta do this early because I gotta go to work today. Got my banneton basket. My dough has been rising all night. I wake up at five o'clock every morning so that I can bake bread. I bake bread because I love it. Otherwise I wouldn't get up at five o'clock in the morning. My hope is to be able to sell the bread at the market and maybe not have to work all the time. Um, right now, I'm thankful for my job. It's a good job. I love my coworkers, but I love my bread. It's this balance. So as far as money making goes, my mom and I are doing just enough to get us by. Ammon went out and made money shoveling people's roofs uh, throughout the winter because you get a lot of snow in Alaska in the wintertime. My dad was a little bit less fortunate. He's a builder, and when you want to get started building in a new area, you have to have all the licensing and stuff figured out. And that proved to be a lot more difficult than he had anticipated. It is exciting to be off-grid. It's exciting to be thinking about building a farm and homesteading in the great state of Alaska. But I, I'm assuming everyone goes through this, just this guttural fear that hits you when you realize, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna pull this off? We've still got to pay for things, you know? We're off the grid, but we have a generator, and it takes a lot of money to pay for gas. <sighs> when I first got to town, I applied for my builder's license, and I did everything that I needed to submit to the state of Alaska and I thought awesome I could start building right now and making money. I talked to the state of Alaska and they said don't you dare start building or we'll take you down and I'm like gosh guys I've been waiting for all this time and can you give me anything? They can't give me anything. So it's been like five or six months and I still haven't heard a thing from the state of Alaska. There's a fear that goes with it sometimes that you have to face, and I'm kind of right there right now. I'm facing that fear, and it, it's a little nerve wracking. Um, remember that next time. I guess to kind of close this episode up, like Ammon and I just wanted to give you guys some, some advice, some tips, some uh, thoughts. Like he and I have both um, thought about a lot about like maybe being like life coaches. We haven't really done that, but just we've thought about it a lot. About being life. And so we just want to share some of the things that we think we might share if we were life coaches. So if you want to build and develop your vision, you got to create a GPA: goal, plans, and actions. Sorry. I learned this <clears> on my mission. So you set a goal. It's not and about you make five different plans. Wait, wait, okay, out of that goal, and then you got to create a bunch of action points to help you achieve wait, those wait, plans. Wait, and eventually, your goals will be actually it's a it's a vision VGPA. Yeah, your vision, then goals. What's up? I got something. If I were to put it simply, I would tell you, it's not about the journey, it's about the destination. It's not about the mountain you have to climb. It's about reaching the top before anybody else. Yeah. Do you believe you know, in yourself enough to, to make this dream happen? You know, I mean, think about that. Like, tell me, I want you to take like five seconds here. You know, maybe, maybe 30, I might need a little more time. Grab a pen and paper and just write down like, okay, what is my dream? You know, what I want to do, you know, write that down. I actually, actually, once you write that down, I want you to put your notepad down, don't write anything. Put yourself in your own shoes for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Think, if I were me and I had this dream, what would I do in order to accomplish it? <laughs> And just think about that for a minute. Don't write anything down, you know, just let it process. Just let, let, kind yeah. of based in that. Yeah. Really uh, let it simmer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then pull your notepad up again. Write all the things that are holding you back from accomplishing your dreams. I want you to frame it. And put, <laughs> and put it on your, on your mantle and wake up every morning and say, you're wrong. <laughs> Write all the things that are holding you back from accomplishing your dreams, and we want you to just tear want you it to up. Light it on fire. <laughs> tear it or up. Or tear it up. <laughs> Whatever. Well, and you can, you can tear it up, then light it then on. Then light it on fire. And with the ashes. I got something cool out of you. Guys.
fertilize your garden with the ashes <laughs> of your doubts. I don't fuel know the fire of your faith. Far. Yes. <laughs> with the ashes of your doubts, fuel the fire of your faith. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it means something to me.